Hey everyone, a really warm welcome back and if you're new to the channel you are very welcome indeed. My name is Becky and today I want to talk about this thing because this fits into solo parent caravanning in terms of making life much easier. So for me one of the keys to successful and calm, stress-free uh, solo parent caravanning is to keep everything as simple as possible. Sometimes that means fitting extra stuff, so for example motor movers or tire pressure management systems, things to keep an eye on stuff and stop problems happening. Sometimes it means carrying less stuff around, so for example there's not much technology in this caravan, uh, there's no TVs for example, everything is super simple. And sometimes it means doing things a little bit differently. So for example this thing is not just a worktop extension to this admittedly very bijou kitchen, uh, it makes life much easier in terms of the process because we've got a little bit more space so it's much easier to think about dish racks and that sort of thing or for the boys anyway because the deal is I plan and tow and they dishwash um, but it also makes life much easier in terms of setting up when you arrive somewhere and packing down when you go home because there's a little hidden secret here that is in this drawer is where I keep the electric kettle and the toaster so if we're on hookup all I have to do is arrive and get the caravan level and so on and then when I'm ready for a cup of tea it's just a matter of opening the drawer, filling the kettle up and it can boil in situ where it is. As soon as it's uh, cool enough or when we're ready to pack up and go home, simply a matter of closing the drawer and turning the travel catch if that's what we're going to do. So it makes life much easier in terms of not having to get stuff out of the cupboard, not find specific places for stuff to travel uh, because it always lives in that one place. Uh, means I don't need to worry about crumbs and all that sort of stuff. So let's get into the video and see how we made it. Everybody ready? Good. Then let's get going. Anyway, this is the space that needs something. Uh, this shelf is just to the right height to have become a general dumping ground most of the time if it's not occupied by something. Of course if we're parked up somewhere uh, then the toaster and the kettle are put here because there's a 240 volt socket at the back. So that's all well and good uh, in terms of putting the toaster and the kettle out but what I could really do with is a bit of extra washing up space. Well, the boys could do with a bit of extra washing up space uh, because the deal is always that I drive and they do most of the washing up. Anyway, if the hobby's still hot from cooking, you can't put the glass lid down. And if you can't put the glass lid down, of course, where do you put the draining rack? Or where do you put the draining rack when you're using the hob? So it could really do with a bit more space and level at the top here on the left seems ideal. So a worktop extension here to the left of the sink would be very handy indeed. So, of course, if we do that, then we potentially lose our kettle and toaster space. So that's when the idea of creating a sort of slide-out platform for them came from. So they could live in there permanently, for example, meaning we don't even have to put them away when we're ready to move, uh, which is why the idea popped into the old grey matter. Anyway, quite a few hours of head scratching and measuring and paper template fitting later led us to this. Life, of course, could have been a lot simpler if I just screwed into the structure that's there already. But I didn't want to do that for a couple of reasons. So these worktops are, I think, hollow um, honeycomb type structures inside. So it m would have been difficult to get a screw to, to stay put in there. I might have been able to rivet it um, onto the faces themselves, but I've no idea how strong they are because I didn't install it and this isn't a material I'm particularly familiar with. So I don't know exactly what they've used. And of course, I was very reluctant to put loads of screws into the caravan. You know, if this doesn't work or it looks stupid or we change our minds at some point, then it would be an absolute nightmare to try and repair the damage that will have been done by uh, putting lots of screw holes in. So although it made construction incredibly complex, a freestanding box was the way to go. And I do have a little trick in mind for securing it in place, which we will come to later. So after all that templating and the inevitable fettling process with routers and sandpaper and so on, my wonderful husband has produced this. 
And for anyone who's worried that girl power, well, no, I guess woman power, has deserted this channel, please don't fret. Uh, while I may have come to off my woodwork class at school, recently Mike's been taking much more of an interest in uh, making stuff. And so while I do a lot of the coming up with a bonkers ideas in the first place, bits and pieces, he's a lot more patient than me with the sort of attention to detail that we need to get this to work perfectly. So while well, I'm sure I could throw something together, it's a lot nicer to be working as a team, and then we each take the lead on the bits that we're best at. So between us, we make an incredibly strong team. Uh, when we're not having a robust discussion about what the plan is, that is, of course. Anyway, enough philosophy, let's get back to woodwork. So, having completely failed to film any of the outer box construction, uh, Mike's now ready to build the drawer, and you'll see that we're following the diagonal front shape of the cabinet, so the same as what's there already underneath. It makes life a little bit more complicated, of course, but it looks much better and then maximises the space. And originally we thought we'd use drawer runners to enable the drawer to, to super extend out, but they take up far too much space at the sides. There's no way we're going to be able to get the toaster and the kettle into there if we do that. So we're just going to use um, some little side pieces popped onto the carcass itself to stop the drawer from tipping, so it'll work like a sort of cantilever. You'll, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Then we just need to glue it all up, uh, pop a couple of brad nails in and leave it to set. All right, and one final sand and then we're on to painting. But whilst we're on the move, uh, Mike has made this really gorgeous little teardrop shaped uh, metal catch thing. And it's a little bit tight at the moment actually, but I'll, I'll need to take it out anyway to do the painting. So when I pop it back on later, I'll just put it on a little looser than it is now. So anyway, when we're ready to travel, we just push this uh, clasp down and that locks the drawer uh, closed so it stops it from sliding out when we're cornering or so on. All right, and the next job is to get some colour on this, so that it looks good as well as works well. It needs to coordinate with the slightly orangey wood we've got in the caravan anyway. So this is my favourite uh, Liberon ebony wood dye. This is a water-based dye and it goes on absolutely beautifully onto this birch ply. We've built loads of bookcases and cupboards and so on for the house. Um, and I absolutely love this stuff. It gives such a great, uh, even, professional finish. And the grain shows through as well from the birch, so you know, you get the best of both. It's wonderful. So two coats of this on all the surfaces, and then I've got a new type of uh, spray on varnish to try. Uh, these little pyramids actually are really handy because most of the time with this sort of piece, you know, this sort of 3D thing that you want an even finish on all over, you want to try and get the finish on all in one go and then you avoid any overlaps in the colour or runs and so on. Uh, and of course with these little pyramids you can because you can balance the draw or the underside, the least seen bits on them. And uh, the way I've been using them, they don't seem to leave any marks at all, which is fantastic. So I'll be here painting for a while, so I'll speed this next bit up. And here's why I always do two coats, so even when it looks perfect on the, the large flat front surfaces, so despite going over these edges really, really carefully, and it looking completely flat and when all the dye was wet you always get a little bit of this on ply so it just misses uh, once in a while just doesn't soak in evenly 
So I'll get a second coat on now on all the parts and finish off the outside carcass in the same way. And uh, whilst I'm doing that, hopefully the new varnish will be delivered. And yeah, here it is. So, you know, I'm usually happy with brush on or roller on varnish. But my favourite one of those is water based and that dyes water based as well. So there's always the risk of, of it washing out a bit, especially with so many edges and little nooks and crannies and corners mm -hmm. that I need to get into on this project. So I thought I'd try some spray on stuff for a bit of a change. Now, ideally, also each layer of varnish will go on in one go, so the same as the paint. And um, I need a well ventilated space as well, so not really good for painting the garage. So here is a paracord and pergola based plan. Let's see if it works out. I've screwed a couple of loops into the gaps left by the construction um, on the invisible bits on the back. So just where the slots were, were cut to put the uh, base of the drawer in. So I'm going to try and spray each piece while it's suspended. <laughs> It's not that well ventilated, so hang on, I'll go and get a mask. Now, actually the surface looks great on this I just did a little bit of light sanding between each of the layers and it feels really smooth and looks really nice with that one actually I think this has worked really well very happy with that all right so this thing has been stood for 24 hours to completely harden off and uh, so now let's see if I can get it fitted I'm going to use this automotive panel braid uh, double sided tape so I'm going to put that along the top side and then underneath hopefully that's just enough to hold it still then if I ever do want to remove this whole thing hopefully it's just a case of running a sharp blade through the centre of the tape because it's a few millimetres thick and then dealing with any sticky residue that's left behind now it will be really messy and a pain to clear up uh, but of course there'll be zero screw holes
And incidentally, those bits of paper I, I popped in earlier next to the silver upright bits um, were just there to stop those silver bits from getting marked or scratched uh, whilst everything got slid into position because it was really tricky because of the, the top shape of the worktop to get everything slotted in properly. There is a tiny gap around them once everything is fitted uh, so they shouldn't get marked while we're travelling along and so on but uh, as I said the box was incredibly tricky to get into position so there was every chance they were going to get marked in that bit of the fitting. Okay, now this is the really, really complicated bit. So the top lid of this new cupboard follows precisely the edge of the worktop, which has a bit of a, I guess you'd describe it as a dog leg in it. And so that means uh, this has to be slotted in first, and then I have to try and get the covers off the tapes uh, to try and get the thing stuck down properly. So uh, I shall try a fork to try and get the edge off this, because this red edging uh, plastic on top of this double-sided tape a bit of a pain to get off so it's going to take a bit of wiggling in a minute because I'm going to have to wiggle the cupboard I guess up slightly hopefully on a slight diagonal and then get the red caps off and uh, on both the top and the bottom and then hopefully well, I'll just be able to slot it wedge it just back down into position anyway I'm going to give that a go Come on. Oh, this is so annoying. Come on, come on, little bit of tape. Oh, nearly, nearly, nearly. got it all right now the rest is easy once I've got that moving okay now just this strip across the bottom and that should be fairly easy hopefully Just press this into position to make sure the tape's taken. And that is that. So let's just clear out the spare bit here. Stop anything messy hanging over. All right, and now to slot the drawer in and give everything a test. Hmm, this drawer is actually a bit tight. Okay, very tight. So apparently that thin layer of varnish was enough to take this from super easily sliding perfectly to sticking completely. Now obviously the varnish will harden off even more over the next few weeks, um, but it does get very hot in here. So I decided to run the sander all around the edge of this, this front piece, uh, just to ease it a bit more and give it a bit more expansion room. And then it fits much better. Um, also, I quite like this this sort of striped, stripped off edge. Uh, so I'll pop a coat of varnish back over the top to protect it. But I don't think I'll re-dye it, actually. I think I'll just leave it with this bit of contrast in, which looks good. Oh. 
All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the, the video there, the summary of how we, we made the thing. As I said, it's brilliant in terms of we arrive, undo the drawer, make a cup of tea, and then when we're ready to go, close it up, lock the thing closed, and we're good to go. It saves me a huge amount of time, and time is absolutely critical when you're one adult trying to get everything packed up and off-site by the deadline. So that's great. Um, as always, thanks so much for your company. It was wonderful to have you here. Please do share the video if you found it interesting. And uh, all I have to say now, of course, is the usual stuff about thumbs up if it was good and subscribe if you're not already. And uh, from me, it's bye for now. So see you. Bye. <laughs>